Hi fellows and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, in this video we're going to adjust the valve clearance of a Massé Ferguson MF35. This is the four cylinder diesel that you've seen in all my other videos with a lot of frost damage but now this time we are getting ready to adjust the valve clearance. Now adjusting the valve clearance isn't all that hard to do. Uh, you have to do it when the engine is cold and you need to respect the clearance and the clearance is the gap in between the stem or the top of the stem of the valve and the rocker. But don't worry, you'll see all this. Now, before you can get to the valves uh, on the Massey Ferguson, you will have to do a couple of things. You have to remove the hood first. Now, to remove the hood, you'll find a bolt here and a bolt on the other side. And once you undo these bolts, and I already did it to save some time, then you can tip it forward and lift it up. Let me show you. There you go, and then just take it off. With the hood removed, the next step is to remove the gas tank. And the gas tank is held in place with uh, two bolts over here, and you need to undo those. And then two more in the back. And once you've done that, you still can't lift it off because you have to undo the feet, the fuel feet, uh, towards the fuel filter, and the return. This is the return, which you have to decouple as well from the injectors. And then finally, you also have to decouple the hose, which is coming off the um, filter all the way down to the fuel pump. Uh, of course, in this case, it's all been disconnected already to make it a, a bit faster and easier to show you. And once you've done that, you can basically lift off the fuel tank. Now, of course, if the fuel tank is full, that might be a bit heavy. And with the fuel tank removed, now you can actually remove the valve cover, which is the silver part here. Um, you need to undo three nuts, one, two, three. A little hose here that goes to the intake manifold uh, that sucks off the fumes, uh, the oil fumes. And then you have to lift it off. Uh, now, I already undid the bolts and the nuts and just take it off. Now it might be that in your case that your valve cover is stuck on the cylinder head so then you can prime it off a bit with a flat tip screwdriver but be very careful not to crack it. All right so now we have access to the uh, valves themselves and we are about ready to adjust them. Now before we start to adjust the valve clearance and the valve clearance is the play in between the top of the stem of the valve and the rocker. See, this is where we have to measure. However, um, first of all, we need to identify the cylinders and what valve is what. Well, the first cylinder, and I marked it with number one, is the cylinder closest to the radiator. And cylinder number four, which is this one, is the one closest to the battery bay or the steering wheel. So I just numbered them one, two, three, and four. Then I numbered as well, or labeled the tumblers, the out tumbler, the in, for the first cylinder, in, out, out, in, in, out. And to identify which one is what, just look which valve sits across the intake manifold, and that is a inlet valve. If the valve sits across the outlet manifold, then it's an outlet valve. So that's how easy it is. Now you're going to need a couple of tools and um, let me show you what you need first. You're going to need a few tools and first of all you're going to need a spanner number 13 and this spanner is going to be used to release the locking nut actually uh, on the rocker like so. I already released them a bit so as you can see you can just release them and you're going to need a fairly big flat tip screwdriver that you can actually fit in the screw on top of the rocker, which you then will have to turn to actually adjust the valve clearance. Now adjusting the valve clearance uh, is a very precise job and therefore you're going to need a gauge. And here is a set of gauges. Those are very thin pieces of metal with different sizes and it is stamped on it what is the thickness of that metal blade. And you will, we will have to slide the blade in between the rocker and the top of the valve. That's what we will have to do. But of course we'll have to select the right thickness. Already. Uh, so the first one here is um, one eight thousandth of an inch. So this is going to be 
used on the outlet valve and this one is one twelve thousandth of an inch which we are going to be using for the inlet valve so I can forget about all the rest already and fold it away because I won't need them anymore and the only two I'm going to need are these now for those folks of us that don't have imperial sizes uh, gauges um, a 0.3 millimeter equates to one twelve thousandths of an inch and a 0.2 millimeter uh, blade equates to a one eight thousandths of an inch uh, gauge so this is what we're going to use guys and let me show you a little bit of a close-up on how we actually going to do it I just took a valve at random I don't even know if the camshaft is in the right position but here you see the play between the top of the valve stem and the rocker and that's where the gauge will has to go in between like so and then you need to adjust the rocker so that the gauge is slightly locked but not much you know you should still be able to move it back and forward and that's the trick so, th so you would think now we are ready to go and adjust it well not really because you need to adjust the valves at the right moment in time in other words at the right position of the camshaft now on this engine you can't see the camshaft because the camshaft is all the way below so it's very hard to to look at that so we have to find another way and in fact the valve clearance adjustment has to happen when the camshaft of that specific cylinder is in such a position that the compression stroke just is finished and the labor stroke has just started so the moment of injection yeah. and the name camshaft comes from the fact that it's an axle uh, with um, cams on you know these lobes you can see that over here um, and there are eight of them and pairs of two so this is for a four cylinder there's two uh, per cylinder and per cylinder you have one cam for inlet valve and one for outlet valve so in the Messe Ferguson the camshaft is fitted all the way below in the engine block it is not overhead like in most other uh, modern vehicles now uh, there are push rods which are sitting on top of uh, each of the cams and while the camshaft rotates and the cam comes up the push rod has been pushed up and then it makes the tumbler toggle and it pushes the valve down so basically it opens up the valve while it's rotating further then the push rod is going back down again because the cam is now gone and then the valve spring will close the valve it is not the tumbler or the push rod or the camshaft that is actually closing the valve it is the valve spring so remember that so this is what the camshaft is about now the moment of adjustment of the valves is at the moment and both valves are closed so for sure you can't do it in this when the camshaft is in this position or in that position but you need to do it when the camshaft is in this position when it's really flat there is no cams whatsoever and that's in the moment in time that you need to do the valve clearance adjustment that's the moment in time when both valves have to be absolutely closed and that's the moment in time you actually need to adjust the clearance on both valves now how do you find this well there's a couple of tricks and if you watch one of my previous videos on how to mark the crankshaft because don't forget the crankshaft is driving the camshaft um, then you will know exactly on how you can mark it and how easy it can be but nevertheless if you don't want to watch it I'm gonna show it to you here in another way not explaining what I'm doing but just walking you through uh, on how you can actually identify it the other thing you need to know is the firing order of the engine and this Massey Ferguson is a 1342 so it means that cylinder one fires then cylinder number three then cylinder number four and then cylinder number two and the firing of these cylinders is happening each half crankshaft rotation remember that because uh, that's how we're gonna cycle through the adjustment of the valves so let us find that first moment because we are going to start with cylinder number four adjustment so you have a view of the first cylinder and now you're probably going to wonder well we're going to adjust cylinder number four absolutely right but first of all uh, we will find the moment in time when cylinder number four is at its 
compression, end of compression and beginning of its labor stroke. So when the cam is totally flat. So that's the moment in time we want to adjust cylinder number four. And therefore, we're going to look at cylinder number one first. If you want to know why that is, then you have to watch my other video. So now we are going to rotate the crankshaft in its normal direction until the moment in time that the outlet valve just finishes closing and the inlet valve just started to open up. So have a look on that one. And you need to look at that while you're turning the pulley or while you're turning the crankshaft. And always rotate the crankshaft in its normal rotating direction, which is uh, clockwise on the MSA Ferguson. So keep rotating, keep watching the outlet valve. Now, outlet is about to happen. So now, keep an eye on it, keep slowly rotating. Notice that this valve is now starting to close and now we need to look at this valve now. See, it's just started to open. Did you see that? Outlet just stopped, inlet valve just started to open. Now stop rotating at this moment in time because now you can adjust cylinder number four. So we're going to adjust first of all inlet valve number four and then we'll do outlet valve number four. So we are cylinder number four for all clarity. The inlet valve uh, is to be adjusted to one twelve thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to use my gauge and I will stick it in between the top of the valve stem and the tumbler. And now you can see, you know, it has a lot of play. So we'll unlock the counter nut or the counter, yeah, the counter nut. So we'll unlock the counter nut, like so. And now place your gauge back in there and start to turn the screw with your fingers until, and keep moving the blade, eh, the gauge, and until you feel a bit of pressure. So the more you turn this nut, the more pressure you will have. So, but not too much, just until you feel it. And then stop. Then, take your flat tip screwdriver and a wrench and hold that screw absolutely in place why are you going to tighten up the counter nut? See how the tip of the screwdriver stays in place? Now check it out, because sometimes it can move a bit. It's still good. And I need to tighten a bit more. And let's see. Yeah, this feels good. And if it doesn't, hold the screw, release a bit, turn it back in, and lock. See, now it's too much because now I can't move it anymore. This is good. And now you can tighten it. And always hold the screw in place. So this is good. So now we do the outlet, exactly the same, release. And now with a gauge of one eight thousandth of an inch, put it in place, turn on the screw clockwise until keep moving until you feel a bit of resistance. Uh, a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. So now we put the flat tip screwdriver in, making sure the screw isn't moving, and tighten the counter nut and double check.
yeah that is a little bit too much so I have to release it a bit and give it a little turn check it again yeah that feels a lot better and now I will lock it in place There we go. Double check again. Good. So we adjusted the valve clearance of cylinder number four. What's the next cylinder to adjust? Well, it's number two. And why is that? Well, we're working with a engine which is a, has a firing order of 1342. So after cylinder number four has fired, because that's the moment in time we actually now have adjusted the valves. Um, it is cylinder number two who's going to fire and it fires exactly 180 degrees of crankshaft rotation after cylinder number four so all what you need to do now is rotate the crankshaft half a rotation and you might want to put markers up but look at my other video on the explanation on how that works and how you can place the markers and then you can adjust cylinder number two the same way as i showed you on cylinder number four and what's the next cylinder after number two? Well, then it's uh, cylinder number one, right? It's a 1342, after two comes one. And then again, you rotate the crankshaft half a rotation, 180 degrees. Adjust cylinder number one. When you're done with that one, then you rotate the, uh, the crankshaft another 180 degrees or half a rotation. And then you can adjust cylinder number three. And then you're basically done. And once you're completely done, I always recommend to go through it one more time and double check the clearance. That is how easy it is, guys. Thank you for viewing. I'll see you in my next video.